Hello everyone and thanks a lot to the Executive Forum for giving me the opportunity to be here with all of you. As you can see in the title from my presentation, uh, the topic that I want to tackle is uh, how uh, the European Union is tackling the Internet of Things reality both from policy and funding perspective. I have to say that uh, most probably the advantage and also the risk of being the very last speaker is that many of the things that I was planning to put in the table today has been already shared. So lucky you, I'm going to probably stick to my time, be short and, and go to the point. So let's start. Uh, before going to, to the bread and butter, uh, let me give you uh, two words about Human Associates, the company I work for, so you can understand why I'm here today. Because first of things, we are not philosophers, we are not technical people, and even we are not even experts on Internet of Things. We are experts on EU funding. And the company was created around, I think, more than 25 years ago. Um, the first activity of the business for us, uh, for the company, was to support clients in the internalization process of the markets by using EU funds. And of course, even now, if this is our core business, uh, we opened our service, our portfolio of services in order to adjust to our client needs. And we also offer uh, what is known as loving services in the EU, uh, bit management strategies to access uh, to different EU programs and projects like H2020, Erasmus Plus, or whatever. We also offer communication in the EU. We act as a secretariat of different platform in Brussels, so on and so forth. So now let's move to the real content. So why does the EU matter? Uh, on the one hand, because the EU policy making has direct impact on member states' uh, uh, legislation. There is a common agreement or that uh, more or less 70% of uh, national legislation of the member states is affected by the EU decision making process. Secondly, Brussels is the second biggest city in the world with, uh, with the lobbying power. Uh, so if you have a word to say, you know where you have to go. And the EU budget, uh, so the EU manages also a big bulk of money for, to put in place projects uh, to push the policies that are, are implementing also from the from the EU. And for example, from the for the current framework uh, program, which goes from 2040 to 2020, uh, the EU manages 960 billion euro. In the right hand side, you can see there a picture. Uh, I don't know if you know Brussels, but this is a very, very tiny area called uh, Schumann area. And the blue flags represent uh, EU institution buildings. So you can see that the density is quite high. So if you have a word to say in the Internet of Things industry in Europe, in Europe institutions, probably you are going to just move around there on that area. Regarding the, the IoT potential in the EU market, these are some figures that can vary from study to study. I just extract, uh, extract them from an official study from the European Commission from, from 2015. So you see that the annual growth is more or less at 20%, reaching a potential of more than 1 trillion euros for 2020. And we started for, with 400 million euros in 2015. The number of IoT connections is estimated to grow and increase uh, approximately 4.9 billion in 2015 to almost 25 billion in 2020. And finally, uh, Europe is also fa facing a problem. In order to be able to adjust the reality, the EU estimates that there's, there's going to be a, um, vacancies, or, uh, I, I know, almost 1 billion million vacancies to uh, cover um, to cover the, the the activities that the ICT professionals should uh, should address in an Internet of Things environment. <laughs> So, in this slide, what I want to highlight, or the, the idea behind is like, why by understanding EU policy initiatives, you also will understand where the future EU investments go, in the sense that, okay, the EU is pushing some initiatives to create a right environment, for example, for the Internet of Things, but then at the end of the day, the EU will need also to allocate some real resources to put in place projects, to, you know, to pilot and to test solutions, and then to implement and in the market. 
Even the European institutions started already talking about quite intensively about Internet of Things back, I would say, in 2009. Uh, from my point of view, the key year was 2015, because uh, the digital single market strategy was announced in May, and this is one of the flagship initiatives of the current commission, uh, Juncker's commission. And uh, this strategy has two main goals. The first one is to create a digital single market that will help restore Europe as a world leader in ICT. Uh, from my point of view, but it's just my personal opinion, it's a little bit utopic, but... And the second one is to create a digital single market itself, allowing the free movement of goods, persons, services and capital, and ensure citizens and business can access to online activities in fair conditions of competition. And uh, this strategy is based in three pillars. Uh, the EU has to allow access, create the right environment for development of the digital single market, and also uh, uh, contribute to the European economy and society. All of this can sound a little bit vague, but the reality is that it's already having some practical and real impacts even on the structure of the, of the European Commission. And for example, in July this year, DG Connect will be reshuffled, will be changed, and a unit for Internet of Things will be created for the first time in the European Commission. So, you know, real impact. And now, don't be scared, I'm not going to go one by one, but this is just a timeline to show you how the European Commission is implementing this strategy. I just took uh, from March 2016 until December, so a few months, just because I know that you represent mostly private sector industry, and one of the biggest complaints is that the EU is moving very slowly uh, in this area. I'm not no one to say if this is right or this is wrong, but you can see here the bulk of activities and intensities. Um, and all of them can have, have somehow impact on the Internet of Things. From my point of view, uh, the hot month for Internet of Things uh, regarding the deployment of the strategy was April this year. Why? Because some general framework and communications were approved, like the e-government action plan. This, one's is, this one is probably more level, relevant for the public administration, but uh, often public administration is also the biggest cost customers for e-administration solutions of the private sector. Secondly, the ICT standardization communication was announced and uh, third, and this is I think quite important for you and I would encourage to take a look to the document, the, di the, digi the digitalization of the European Industry Initiative communication was announced also. And last but not least, also in April, the Commission of Star uh, Staff Working uh, document was published uh, analyzing how the Internet of Things is advancing in Europe. Um, if we read carefully mainly the ICT standardization communication and the industry communication, there it is clear state and, and indicated that the EU wants to become a leader on internet industry, internet of things industry by promoting services and devices. But then the next logical question is on how we are going to do this. Uh, mainly the expert, uh, the advice of the expert is to focus also in three different pillars, a little bit mirroring with the pillars of the digital single market strategy. And it's the first one, of course, is to create a single market for Internet of Things by allow, allowing the connection of these services and devices between the different EU member states and, of course, also cross-border. Second pillar should be to create the right environment uh, in Europe for the development of Internet of Things. Uh, this means that not to um, let's say not to focus on niches or silos, but um, to take an approach of working in, in, in big working groups. And the European Commission is actually currently uh, supporting so key leading uh, sectors to test Internet of Things uh, solution and devices to be innovative. Like, um, I mean, we talk about uh, this morning about that, but smart cities, e-health, e-farming, and so on. 
and third, but uh, this uh, this should be done, taking into account also the human component and respecting European values. All of this is not done just by the European institutions like European Commission, Parliament or Council, but uh, the industry and the private sector, of course, has a word to say. This is why, um, uh, for example, in close cooperation with the Commission, in 2015, the Association for Internet of Things Innovation was created, and I think this summer will take also a legal status. Um, so you can, of course, contribute with your visions uh, alone in Brussels by answering to uh, public consultations, but also you can act under the umbrella of these organizations. Uh, the important thing, th uh, the important thing, th thing about um, the public consultations for you to know is that uh, they are they are announced even before the leg legislative package is addressed by the European Parliament and the European Council. So you can just try to make your word listen there. Um, so I hope with this you just get the general idea that the bulk of activities is quite, quite intense. So now let's move a little bit to the funding aspect. Of course, the EU, as I mentioned before, is, is pushing some uh, legislative initiatives and, and creating a kind of public policy to, to promote Internet of Things, but also there is a need also to allocate some resources. I made a classification here, it's not official, uh, because there are uh, thousands of EU programs. So I just pick up the, the ones that I think are more relevant for the IoT industry and classify them in two different types of funds. First type of funds, Brussels driven funds, are managed centrally in Brussels and implemented cross border in Brussels. And the second type of funds are country driven funds. Probably you have heard about in Spanish is Fondos Estructurales and in English is the Structural and Investment Funds. They are just applied and used at local level for local projects and final decision is made by, by different member states. The logic behind the Brussels driven fund, it's like, okay, the commission is putting in place some f funding instruments and programs, first to research and to see what type of solutions can, you know, we can create and we can just jump to the market after. Then there is a need to pilot and test those solutions. And then you need to implement them operationally across border in Europe. So let's focus on Brussels driven funds. I just selected the most important programs from my point of view. For research and development, we have H2020 program. Already in 2016, few calls were launched just for Internet of Things industry, okay? With, for example, 100 million euro for large, large scale, scale pilot projects uh, in areas like e-health, I think it was e farming, uh, aging, and so on. Four million euros for Internet of Things horizontal activities, 70 million euros, which is quite a big amount, for international cooperation. So we see that uh, Europe is also opening to the rest of the world and 35 million euros for R&D on IT integrations and platform. This call is still open. Uh, don't ask me until when. I know that it's until 2017, but I don't remember now the month and the date, sorry. Uh, then, when we talk about piloting, uh, we can mention, for example, ISA2 program. This one is to test interoper interoperability solution for public administration in, in the EU. With one, 130 million euros for 2016 and 2020. And finally, for implementing all these solutions cross border, we have the Connected European Facility. Uh, this instrument, the objective of this instrument is to create cross border ne networks and infrastructure and connection to allow uh, 
um, to allow, I mean, mainly in three sectors, transport, energy, and telecommunication. Uh, if we focus on the area of telecommunication, the objective of the program is to create the right infrastructure and connectivity among the different uh, member states to allow all the citizen, public administration, and, and business to be able to, to connect digitally. And the type of um, initiatives that the, the, the fund uh, address is, for example, invoicing, automated translation, EID. This means that to use your own uh, national ID to access to um, services to other public administration from the other member states, e-delivery is signature and so on. 1.2 billion euros for the whole programming period. And last but not least, the European Union, European Union institution itself could be uh, quite good customers for the for the private sector in the sense that the agencies, the different units, the Parliament, they have an average around 500 million euro on IT per year. And when we talk about the country-driven fund, we have to talk about the European Structural and Investment Funds. These funds are, as I mentioned before, managed by the countries, of course following EU directions. And the projects are implemented locally in the case of Spain, in the Comunidades Autónomas, Ayuntamientos, and so on and so forth. For the current programming period, the budget for ICT-related investments is 21.4 billion euros for the whole 28 member states. What type of topics these funds cover? For example, the acquisition of online goods and services, development of e-government services and applications, e-health, ICT application for SMEs and industries, smart cities, so on. And uh, there, I'm not going to just go in detail, but you can see some just number and figures on the expectations that uh, that um, that the, how the EU see, like by investing and using these monies, what is going to be the impact. Um, according to the logic of, of the European Union, and if uh, the commissions follow the path uh, towards the development of the digital single market, Internet of Things, connectivity, being the region, the most competitive region in the world, we can, from our experience, we can expect that in the next programming period, which go, will go from 2020 to 2027, even the allocation for activities related to ICT and digitalization will be even bigger than these 21.4 billion euros. Okay, and just to close my intervention, once someone told me that um, vision without, without action was hallucination. Okay, then, so if you want to access to EU funds, if you, want, if you have a word to say in Brussels, you have to be ready. And how? You need to understand the EU value proposition. And what is this? I mean, the answer is as complicated as simple, okay? But I just can give you five advices. First, you need to invest time and resources. This is not an easy thing to do. Then you need to create awareness in your, into your organization that this is a market that is interesting for you. Third, you need to understand who is out there, which is the role of the each one, and then you have to engage with the right partners. And at the end of the day, if you are able to do all of this, I'm sure that you will be able to create a pipeline of opportunities that in the future will, in, will increase your market share. Thank you, everyone.